This is my Kagiva 750 Elephant from 1992. Today I want to do some improvements to it. Turn signals, the fairing and the rear fender needs attention. And uh, during this work I hope to share some tips and tricks and I will also be using my 3D printer actually to help me uh, correct the mistakes that uh, previous owners has uh, done or just uh, improvements because of uh, wear and tear over the years. And the first fix I want to do is to take away this rust. This is uh, plastic, but so the rust comes from the clip that has been there. One of them was brand new, while the other ones were quite uh, rusty. I took my sandblasting gun and cleaned them up and gave them a coat of zinc. I will also give them a coat of paint. I will be using this uh, rubbing compound to get the rust off the paint. I've found that to be the most uh, efficient way. Much better. And by the way, I'm using this uh, inexpensive uh, sandblasting gun. It's very useful. It comes with different kind of adapters and I'm just using a plastic box as my cabinet. So you don't need a, like a full-blown sandblasting cabinet to clean up small parts like this. Best to do it outdoors though. It gets a bit dusty and of course you need an air compressor. Okay, I need to wait for my paint to dry before I can put on the clips. So let's take a look at the indicators. These are the original one, but I have this uh, problem. My uh, rear fender is not the original one, so it's a different set of uh, indicators on the rear part of the bike, and I don't like them to be different. So I would like to have the same indicators all over, so I have bought some aftermarket small ones, lead indicators. Not sure if it will look decent on this bike. Uh, maybe they are a bit more modern than they should be. But uh, let me try them on. So, first challenge, when you're going from traditional indicators to LED, the relay that makes the indicators blink, it will not work on a LED indicator. These indicators has uh, actually built-in electronics, so I can just power them directly, 12 volt to them, and they will start blinking with this uh, running uh, lights effect. I could mention that not all uh, indicators has a built-in uh, blinking effect. Then you need a separate relay. It's not actually a relay, it's more like an uh, electronic box that provides an uh, uh, interval pulse to them. On this bike I found the indicator relay on behind the headlight. I've measured the cables and uh, this was the ground cable and I can just disconnect the two positive cables. And then I've made this uh, small wire and I can just uh, connect these two together. And uh, now I have like disabled the original relay. I'll just keep it here. This should now give a constant uh, positive signal when I turn on the indicators. I've already loosened the screw, so I now can just take it out. And here you can see the next problem. These indicators are specifically designed for this bike. These uh, profiles fit exactly into this. And of course my new indicators, even though I can put them on here, it's not very pretty. Because, yeah, they're like too small. And this hole cut out here doesn't fit at all. In these situations, it's very handy to have a 3D printer. So what I did was took a measurement of this uh, original uh, indicator and I made an adapter like this. This adapter now fits perfectly into this uh, hole. Nice!
Okay, I should perhaps mention that uh, these bolts are not the original ones. This was uh, what was on the bike and I'm not sure if these are the original ones either. I wanted to make something a bit slimmer so I made my own design, 3D printed a washer and I've used these uh, bolts that have this uh, kind of chamfer. This uh, washer now fits uh, perfectly into them. So they get a bit uh, slimmer. Also this washer is very uh, greyish while my washer is much uh, whiter and fits better to the bike I think. And uh, it seems like the previous owner has put on all kind of random bolts to attach the fairing. Uh, some of them are even too long. So yeah, the bolts bottom down before they actually hold the fairing properly. And uh, yeah, they're all kind of types. I would replace them with the same bolt everywhere. Oh, I almost forgot. Need to test the new turn signals. It's a bit strange when you don't hear this uh, ticking noise, but uh, yeah, seems to work. And it do look uh, a bit better, doesn't it, when uh, all the screws are the same type? Or is it just me? And of course, it's a bit strange that the indicator on the dashboard is not blinking. Because I removed the relay and the turn signal itself take care of the blinking. This one just stays on put until I turn it off. I have also 3D printed some parts to improve my handlebar area. Uh, this piece is made to fit here into this hole. I guess this has been used to hold the handguards, but I don't have them. So I made this so they can fit over here. And you can see this rubber boot is broken or rubber cap. Yeah, not pretty. So. I can uh, just remove the cap on the fork ventilation and then I've 3D printed uh, this one that fits as a cap and also cover up this hole. It's time to take a look at the rear fender. As you can see, I've taken off all the parts, made a proper cleaning, rust protected and painted the metal parts, added on the plastic and rubber renewer, black pigmented on the plastic pieces. And I highly recommend you do the same whenever you do a service or maintenance or uh, repairs. Clean everything and uh, make it look as good as you can before you start to reassemble and work on it much better to deal with clean parts. Okay, um, I have also 3D printed a couple of adapters here as well for the indicators. So let me start by just putting everything back on the bike. See if my plan works out.
So far, so good. I'm really happy with the result. My 3D printed brackets and the LED uh, indicators, I think it's uh, suitable for this uh, fender. Looks nice, I think. I noticed, by the way, that the reflective plate, uh, it's not the correct one, it's too big. So I will not be using this one. I ordered a new one. Not a big deal. But what is a big deal is I need to fabricate a cover a lid here on the fender. When I bought the bike, this was included. Yeah, it doesn't really fit. It has a big hole here uh, and uh, you can see it doesn't really match up with the light either. So yeah, this is uh, no good for me. I think I can do better. And of course I will try to 3D print one. I've made a Prototype, a first attempt, just uh, taking some measurements, uh, modeling it, see how it goes, just, a, just as a test. And uh, the good thing is, yes, my 3D printer can print uh, this kind of pieces that uh, is big enough, but uh, this uh, was a disaster. It didn't match up at all, so uh, this is uh, useless. It's also very rough. I printed in very low quality, uh, fast speed. So it's just for a test. And then I made a new one and I haven't tested it yet. So it's time to take off this uh, support. It's uh, when you 3D print this stuff, you need to print on a flat surface. And since I want to have some curves here, I, I had to add some uh, layers of uh, plastic at the bottom that I need to take off. So let me do that and see if this fits a bit better. Okay, moment of truth. This was my first prototype. It's way too small and it has too much of a curve. Here is my second one. It's much better. So now I'm pressing it down to the glass here and it has a gap here. I can measure this now and uh, I can do the last fine corrections. From above, I think it looks good, very good. So you can see it has uh, the correct uh, width and it follows the curve of the taillight. And these two holes match up perfectly because my luggage tray is coming here and we'll go into this. So this will be the end result. And then I will need a new cover that goes from this position. So I need a new lid over this part. I think uh, this looks promising. I will have to do a small refinement to this piece and uh, then 3D print in much higher quality next time. And that will take some time. This uh, took uh, three, four hours to print in the highest quality settings. I would assume 68 hours. So I will have to make a follow-up video. Really sorry I was not able to put on the rear fender and show you the final product, but I'll make a follow-up video with that. And by the way, the project came a bit out of hand uh, because my bike now As you can see, the project escalated. Ended up taking off the whole rear subframe. It's uh, bolted on, that's nice. But what's not uh, nice is all the rust and damage to it. Some of the nuts are, uh, have damaged the treads as well and the plastic here is broken. Okay, I will have to fix it. Welding, grinding, sandblasting, priming, painting. And hopefully it will be in good condition so I can put it back on together with the fender and the indicators. And uh, that will be in my next video. If you want to see how it goes, you know where to find me. Bye bye.